Hi, my name is Steve. Welcome to my shop. In this continuing series on the getting the most from your slider, we're going to continue with the ripping operation. And about a year and a half ago, I made a video on the building of the Fritz and Franz jig. And I'll leave a link to this in the description and at the end of the video if you want to build your own. Fritz and Franz jig is a two-piece jig. I have uh, positioned T-tracks on this, uh, and the video shows how I did that. It did not show making these stops. Uh, it's just made out of Baltic birch and some maple, uh, a quarter twenty hex head nut, and a, and a lock, star locking handle. Uh, this, I'm, I'm really surprised how smooth it is, how easy to get on, and. Uh, these stops are what I these stops are what I use to rip. First thing I'm going to do is set move these T blocks out of the way. Is set my my stop here to 120 millimeters, and then <clears throat> I'm going to position the rip fence here and since both of these ends are flush, this is almost like a zero clearance with the saw blade, I'm going to put these two together, just hold them, and that's the way I set the, uh, the rip width. Okay, that's, uh, it's a quite a simple setup, and I'm going to go ahead and start the machine and Rip. Okay, so that uh, that was quite simple. I get good results. Um, for shorter pieces, I use this. For larger pieces, obviously, I, I use different methods. And I'm capable of, of, of going up to, oh, I'd, probably the most I'd ever rip on this would be uh, 400 millimeters wide, which is roughly 16 inches. Okay, the next method uh, to use with the uh, Fritz and Franz, I'm just going to show you how I rip thin strips. We're going to use a similar method uh, to what, what you saw before. I think it was in the second of the ripping videos. I'm going to unlock the fence. And I'm going to set the width to, uh, I'm just going to set it to 1.7 millimeters. And using a thicker piece like this, I'm, I, I don't even need to need the stops on the um, on the Fritz and Franz, so I'll just move them out of the way. What I'll do is pull the fence back as a, as I did before, and here's one thing that you uh, you do need to be aware of. I found that this particular technique, if you're ripping a whole lot longer than the than the rip fence length, it can you can get it uh, a little whopper jawed, and you can actually rip a very thin tapered edge banding. So I usually like to to go just a little longer uh, or a little thicker than what I normally would want, and then run that through the edge through the uh, drum sander, which which uh, does a does a really nice job of thicknessing and removing any inconsistency and any saw blade marks. So just as before, we will use the fen rip fence as a width stop.
Okay, and I'm just a little thinner on the trailing edge than I am because I do I do prefer my rip fence set up with a slight toe out, and uh, it's just a little thinner on this end than the other. So you can account for that by making a wider uh, a wider uh, uh, setting and then adjust to the drum sander, or could adjust the toe out of the rip fence. So this is the conclusion of the ripping operations on getting the most from your slider series. If you have any other questions, comments, please provide them. I'll do my best to answer them. I hope you've gotten a lot of information on this. Uh, these are primarily experiences that I've had over the, over the years and I've kind of focused in on what works best for me. If you've got other solutions that work best for you, hey, I'd love to hear about them. The next episode in this series on getting the most from your sliding table saw will cover cross-cutting. So please continue to watch, feel free to comment, subscribe, I appreciate your subscriptions and interest, and thank you for watching.